Okay, so we will continue chapter seven. Okay, so it's quite important juga. So, Bab, Nayani, Adela, introduction to hydraulics. Okay, so all the while, chapter one to chapter six, kita belajar pasal pneumatic and also electro pneumatic. Ah, uh, tapi chapter seven ni kita dah masuk ke hydraulic. Tapi one good thing about hydraulic system, dia lebih kurang sama macam pneumatic. So you boleh tengok ada benda-benda yang ada dekat dekat pneumatic dia lebih kurang sama. So it's almost the similar. Um, okay, so we will we will check first what is hydraulic, what is the advantage and disadvantage. So definition of hydraulics. So hydraulics is the science of transmitting force or and or uh, motion through the medium of a confined liquid ok, so boleh tengok dekat sini ada few keyword so satu adalah transmitting force so transmitting force uh, or end or motion uh, so transmitting force maksudnya dia akan ada power so that there will be a power uh, so it use the medium of confined liquid confined liquid maksudnya uh, what is the medium? So, macam pneumatic, so the medium will be ah, compressed air. So, kalau air tu minus mark eh, ah, udara, udara dekat keliling pun air. So, you need to you need to use the term pressurized air ataupun compressed air. Ah, because normal air cannot, uh, don't have power. Ah, so, in hydraulic, apa? So, what do we will use? So, what liquid? Ah, so, confined liquid. So, dalam hydraulic, dia gunakan confined liquid. Apa tu confined liquid? Liquid yang confined. Okay. So, student jawab. So, apa itu confined liquid? Liquid yang confined. Apa itu confined? Tak tahu. So, confined maksudnya, you letak uh, in one particular storage. Uh, so, macam oil. So, uh, one example lah, dalam kereta. So, kalau you biasa gunakan kereta, so, you bought service, Ah, uh, so you can tukar minyak hitam kan? So minyak hitam tu you just uh, let, uh, masukkan sekali dengan petrol ke ataupun you ada satu particular place for you to put the engine oil. Ah, uh, dia ada particular storage kan? Ah, uh, so that is what we call as a confine. So it will be in one particular volume. Ah, uh, so dalam hydraulic we are using oil, so, hydraulic oil bukan coconut oil lah atau uh, so you cannot put simply whatever oil so you need to use uh, hydraulic oil okay so jangan gunakan apa minyak masak dekat rumah uh, so tak boleh so you must use a specific oil we call it as a hydraulic oil so hydraulic oil tu you masukkan dalam the storage for you to use in your hydraulic system so in a hydraulic device power is transmitted by pushing on a confined liquid. Uh, so confined liquid ni dia akan ada dekat storage then you have a uh, hose uh, to transfer from one place to another place. Uh, kemudian uh, so apa yang dia akan buat? Uh, so uh, you you will create a a force for it to push from one place to another place. Okay so hydraulic power trans Transmission is the technique of transmitting energy by means of liquid medium. So, liquid utilized for this purpose are term hydraulic fluid. Uh, so, kita boleh gunakan term hydraulic uh, fluid ataupun hydraulic oil. Uh, so, dua-dua accepted lah. Okay, so the main thing that you need to remember uh, differences between pneumatic dengan hydraulic adalah the medium. So pneumatic using com compressed air, while uh, hydraulic gunakan confined fluid, ataupun hydraulic fluid. Okay, so hydraulic system are commonly used where mechanism requires large force and precise control. So another thing, uh, hydraulic ni kita akan gunakan untuk something yang you nak buat precisely. Uh, so precisely maksudnya apa dalam bahasa Melayu G2 kan? Okay, so something yang very accurate. Uh, so you want to be very accurate. So one of the uh, 
one of the example yang kita selalu gunakan dalam daily life satu adalah power steering ha, power steering ni adalah hydraulic application ok so hydraulic application uh, then uh, you have also brake uh, brake pun brake uh, dengan clutch semua kan so dalam tu ada minyak so brake fluid ada clutch fluid uh, so it will, when you press a little bit so it will go and uh, do whatever necessary so another thing that uh, we can see in our daily life adalah auto gate auto gate pun tengok ada selinder kan selinder yang attach to the gate so it will extend or uh, retract in order to open or close your uh, auto gate ok so another example so can be vehicle power steering, brake, hydraulic jack ha, hydraulic jack pun uh, biasa kita tengok so you go to car workshop you, di, you tengok dia tekan so platform akan naik uh, so platform akan uh, naik so you cannot use pneumatic there uh, pneumatic means tup tup uh, cannot <laughs> cannot cannot lift anything so hydraulic so you, it, using a large force and it must be precise uh, so certain so jangan you tekan you lepas dia still naik uh, jangan so it must you stop it, dia pun stop uh, so when when uh, hydraulic we normally we will use if where a large force is required so another place yang kita boleh tengok adalah crane uh, crane ataupun uh, what they call excavator excavator tahu tak uh, excavator apa dalam bahasa-bahasa kita panggil cari makan uh, cari makan so dia, so dia pergi makan kan dia pergi korek uh, so uh, it's using so boleh tengok cylinder is extending retracting uh, kemudian dekat lori lori pasir uh, biasa tengok kan uh, dia pergi ambil pasir kemudian hydraulic jack akan naik uh, so pasir akan turun uh, so all that are uh, application of hydraulic so you will see some common applications of hydraulic system uh, ini adalah vehicle brake hydraulic system so macam mana waktu you tekan brake uh, dia boleh uh, boleh break. So this is the wheel. So wheel kemudian ada brake pad. Uh, kemudian you tekan you tekan brake pedal. So uh, the force uh, dia akan push the confined fluid uh, to the brake line. Uh, then dia akan hantar dekat dekat your your wheel for you to break. Uh, so boleh tengoklah. So boleh baca boleh baca sendiri how it works. Uh, so dari dari Tapi dia punya uh, cerita dia, so you you press the brake, so it will apply force. This force will push all this confined fluid uh, to that particular area where uh, the brake will will be used to stop the vehicle. Okay, power steering. So ini adalah power steering. Okay, so boleh tengok hydraulic pump, ada hydraulic pump yang kecil, kemudian ada power cylinders. Uh, power cylinder ni dia akan extend uh, ataupun retract uh, in order to control the steering ok so steering is control so control valve ada dekat sini so depends on where you turn <coughs> ok so major advantage of using this system is to turn the vehicle uh, wheels with less effort so kalau you biasa macam uh, adalah waktu zaman saya pun ada juga manual um, yang kereta yang tak ada power steering uh, so dia gunakan semua force yang ada so, lepas dah pusing tak boleh pusing balik tak, tak, tak ada power, tak ada energy no no more energy tengok uh, macam bus dulu ataupun lori dia akan pusing Pus, dia akan dia akan pusing sampai lose all the energy imagine dia naik bukit so, pusing sini pusing sana uh, dia jadi tired uh, so that's why we are using now power steering power steering pakai tangan macam ni macam ni, ha, boleh kan ha, so that's the advantage of it lah tapi that's a disadvantage juga, pusing terlalu banyak pergi langgar ha, ataupun it can cause accident especially kalau you are new driver I think mostly are new driver lah kan ha, so waktu you pandu dalam hujan so make sure you hold your power, your steering gunakan dua tangan uh, because the water can make uh, your wheel to 
your steering to move uh, ataupun wheel to move uh, without control lah sebab waktu hujan ni so the the water molecules will stuck to the tire your kereta you boleh terbabat uh, so that's one one tips lah yang saya belajar dari uh, yang, yang lain so which will be very crucial so that's why waktu hujan tu automatic saya akan pegang so jangan waktu tu baru nak main game nak drive tak boleh lah huh? so it's very dangerous ok another application is your hydraulic jack so hydraulic jack ni uh, so you can see in the workshop as well uh, sekarang kereta pun ada uh, a lot of uh, cars using hydraulic jack uh, dia bagi hydraulic jack you pun boleh beli dekat Shopee baru 100 lebih uh, but yeah, it has a very good power uh, so how it work uh, macam ni so you have a end lever so you tekan so waktu you tekan tu so this this uh, cylinder akan turun pumping piston akan turun uh, so it will push uh, so push and uh, you ada one way flow control wall uh, so uh, minyak masuk kalau dah masuk dekat sini dia tak boleh keluar because it's only one direction uh, so uh, lagi banyak you tekan so oil from reservoir dia akan masuk ke sini lah in order to lift the weight uh, so you are using a minimum effort tapi you boleh naikkan one kereta uh, kalau you gunakan tangan you untuk naikkan kereta memang tak boleh uh, because it's not uh, it's not applicable lah but there's a there's a uh, a law law uh, in hydraulic uh, kita panggil as Pascal law so Pascal law ni dia buatkan kita boleh buat benda ni using a less effort uh, you tekan little bit kita boleh naik lagi uh, using that Pascal law nanti kita akan tengok lah what is Pascal law ok then I, aircraft hydraulic system uh, so aircraft generally are using hydraulic system especially dekat dia punya tire ok the wheel landing gear uh, so landing gear ada dekat bawah lah uh, so boleh tengok dalam dalam gambar pun so kapal dah naik so dia so boleh tengok uh, landing gear dia lipat balik masuk dalam so waktu dia turun tu dia akan keluar uh, so that is what uh, we call as landing gear uh, kemudian uh, flap juga flap dekat tepi dekat wing so dia nak naik ataupun turun you boleh tengok kalau you duduk dekat window seat so you boleh tengok the thing open kemudian you pun tengok eh apa ni tiba-tiba oi -tiba, dah dah rosak ke apa that so is actually uh, helping you to uh, to go down ataupun go up uh, lifting or uh, landing landing force uh, so memang gunakan yang ni lah so dia connect dekat switch switch ni dekat uh, pilot punya control panel uh, it's connected to the hydraulic pump uh, so it will either cause the engine power ataupun will control the landing gear uh, uh, so ini bukan kopi latte eh. uh, dekat Starbucks so it's not ataupun McD McCafe bukan uh, so hari ni boleh cakap lagi so esok tak boleh cakap benda ni so it will be okay. so so lead machine biasa guna tak lead machine kan ada kan dalam engineering skills uh, so kalau manufacturing students banyak gunakan yang ni lah tapi mechatronic student I think you will be exposed to it uh, so kita ada lead machine ada milling machine uh, so lead machine semua ni dia gunakan hydraulic principle uh, sebab similar lah hydraulic ni so you are using a less effort to con to create a larger force uh, so apa-apa application yang you gunakan lesser force uh, but it will generate a more force it, it must be connected to hydraulic uh, so uh, kalau dekat industri dia gunakan CNC machine modern CNC machine lah so CNC machine is something that you put the design inside dia automatically akan buat semua so uh, but lead machine is something that you need to do yourself uh, macam zaman-zaman dulu lah uh, so kalau you uh, you nak pergi ke foundry ke apa ke uh, so you can tengok lah lead machine ni uh, dia akan uh, either is dealing with metal ataupun dealing dengan wood so it can be uh, a lot of things lah ok so fundamental laws of hydraulics uh, so dekat sini ada sedikit calculation uh, tapi calculation ni tak keluar dalam exam 
So that's one thing lah Tapi you need to know Sebab ada juga soalan yang berkaitan Okay So all hydraulic system operate following a defined relationship Between area, force and also pressure uh, So apa-apa yang you belajar dalam thermodynamics You will apply here in the subject This uh, pneumatic and hydraulic subject Is totally application subject uh, So wh whatever fundamental So hari itu pun ada waktu meeting last week uh, Ada juga lah dia orang cakap Is there any relevant for you to introduce some mathematics dalam subjek ni Saya cakap tak perlu Sebab memang kita dah belajar semua tu dalam temu, temu fluid So nanti you akan belajar dalam temu fluid uh, Temu uh, temu fluid kan Temu fluid kemudian you akan belajar sini balik So uh, it's not uh, practical lah It's not necessary So dalam pneumatic and hydraulic uh, Sebab sebab tu saya bagi tahu subjek ni senang nak score Sebab Kalau you tahu macam mana nak score You boleh score Haa uh, so itu waktu exam pun saya waktu saya present tengok ada two extreme kan ada saya so off record lah <laughs> okay so ada two extreme ramai fail eh, ram, bukan fail lah ramai yang markah kurang ramai yang score well ha, sebab kita anjak kan last week ha, so ramai dapat full mark ha, so ramai yang at this extreme and also this extreme Ha. This extreme sebab you tahu Apa yang you perlukan untuk design So extreme ni Dia tak score sebab dia tak apa yang kena kena lukis Ataupun buat mistake ha. So The subject uh, no calculation But you need to know the fundamental Laws behind the hydraulic Okay So these fundamental laws are dealing with area Force and also pressure ha. Sebab dia gunakan benda ni So tiga-tiga benda ni akan ada so all these Bernoulli equations semua tu akan ada lah uh, Tapi we will see some law that we didn't really cover in thermofluid Okay Okay so the first thing adalah pressure Okay so pressure ni is using this principle So pressure equals to force over area So you apply a force continuously in a particular area Dia akan jadi pressure uh, so itu uh, orang selalu cakap kan uh, pressure dah naik uh, pressure dah naik kenapa sebab one particular place akan sakit so either dekat sini ke frontal part ke uh, so because it is focused in one particular area that's why we call it pressure kita cakap force dah naik uh, uh, so pressure akan naik so pressure is actually a distribution of a given force over a certain area so that's why in hydraulic, uh, the hydraulic fluid uh, is in the in the hose. So you tekan, you apply a force, you apply a force, they can apply at that particular area to crea create the pressure. Okay, so the equation is pressure equals to force over area, where force is in newton and area is in a square meter. I need SI unit lah. So pressure, the unit is Newton per meter square Ok, Newton per meter square And 1 Pascal is uh, 1 Newton per meter square And 1 bar is 1000 Pascal eh, Tak habis-habis lagi <laughs> So, animation ni saya tak berapa suka lah so, Melambatkan Tapi bukan saya punya slide Ok, so this is one law that you need to know Ok, in order to understand hydraulics So, dalam hydraulic ni digunakan Pascal's law Okay, bukan Pascal movie eh. uh, Bukan movie tu Okay, so itu Pascal lain So this is Pascal So the person who invented this law So apa yang Pascal law bagi tahu? So the pressure in a confined liquid Is transmitted equally to the whole surface Of its container uh, Benda ni kita ada belajar dalam Thermal fluid So when you apply a force It will push all this In the same direction Tapi da lagi dalam, lagi banyak pressure lah But, it will be applied at the same uh, place So, you apply force dekat sini, dia akan keluar So, similarly lah, laka, uh, katakan you ada one bottle of water Kemudian, you tebul lubang So, you apply one force from on top Air itu akan keluar in all direction Okay So, when force F is accelerated on uh, 
area A of an enclosed liquid. Uh, condition dia, uh, liquid tu ada dalam satu surface ataupun volume yang sama. So it's not in a different different uh, place. Okay, the same pressure apply at every point of the closed system as shown in figure 1.10. Okay. Uh, so macam ni, so you apply a force, all the areas dalam confined space ni, dia akan experience the same pressure. Same pressure, okay. Okay, so Pascal Law boleh tengok dekat sini. Okay, figure below shows that if a downward force is applied to a piston A, it will be transmitted through the system to piston B. So, dekat sini ada berapa piston? Dalam gambar ni, ada berapa piston? Ha, ada dua piston. So, piston A1 dengan A2. So, kalau you tengok, uh, size dia tak sama. Area dia tak sama. Uh, so, piston selalunya bulat kan di punya area dia. So, area dia dekat sini radius kurang. Uh, so, the area is not big. Uh, dekat sini, area dia big. Sebab, uh, di punya surface area is big. Tapi, one advantage is this liquid are connected in the same uh, confined space. Uh, so, kalau yang ni in between ada dinding, uh, so meaning dia ada dua confined space. Tapi macam ni dia connected dengan same space. So, if you apply a small force here, the, the force, the pressure dekat sini pun adalah sama. Uh, sebab itu, you apply a small force, you boleh naikkan one big car yang berapa tan uh, still boleh naikkan sebab digunakan Pascal's law so according to Pascal's law the pressure at piston A equals to pressure at piston B uh, so walaupun you cannot imagine the thing macam mana is possible but that is how it works ok so that's why a lot of things can be done lah uh, Uh, so macam mana So this is to prove How we can get So boleh tengok So pressure equals to force over area So pressure 1 equals to force 1 over A1 Okay this is for the first pre pressure So second So pressure 2 equals to P2 over A2 uh, So the, according to Pascal 1 uh, Pascal law P1 equals to P2 uh, So P1 equals to P2 So Force 1 equals to force 2 Area 1 equals to area 2 uh, No, not not uh, Area 1 equals to area 2 lah Tapi dia punya proportion uh, So kalau dekat sini dapat 0.5 Dekat sini pun dapat 0.5 Because you are dividing You are, you are It's just like a upscaling of uh, This lah uh, So dia akan dapat ratio yang sama Okay So, boleh try buat soalan ni. Okay, soalan ni tolong buat sebab it will give you a good understanding about Pascal Law. Macam mana dia ber berfungsi. Okay, so dekat sini boleh tengok. Find the weight of the car in Newton. If the area of piston A, so piston A is here. Piston A. Uh, the, and the area of piston B is given uh, B is 0.0105 so A adalah 0.0006 meter square and the force applied uh, on piston A is 500 newton uh, so cuba gunakan formula yang ada tadi lah in the previous slide ok the first formula yang you akan gunakan adalah yang ni P1 equals to P2 Sebab Pascal law So check dulu Whether uh, uh, Fluid dalam piston 1 Dengan fluid dalam piston 2 Adalah dalam One confined space So macam dekat sini is connected So Pascal law is applied So if there is a disconnection in between uh, Then you tak boleh gunakan Pascal's law Sebab itu adalah dua different medium So it's not in that same confined space Okay so this the first So, kalau yang ni adalah same confined space, it's in the same confined space, then you can apply Pascal's law, which is P1 equals to P2. Okay, so kalau P1 equals to P2, 
F1 over A1 equals to F2 over A2 ha. So Pascal's law gunakan formula ni ha. Then you can apply lah So based on the information yang ada dekat sini So you can calculate Calculate what is uh, the force uh, Force uh, 2 lah, force 2 F2 Apa tu F2 So F1 dah ada F, A1 dah ada, A2 dah ada Okay, so you want to find F2, so you just rearrange this formula. So F1 times with A2 over A1. Uh, so apa yang you akan dapat? Uh, ini adalah uh, ini adalah dia punya sub substitution lah. So uh, F1 adalah 500 newton. So F2 adalah I, uh, uh, adalah 0.0105. Okay, bagi dengan 0.0006 Okay, so you can find F2 So F2 is uh, So ini adalah F2 So dia suruh cari dalam Newton uh, Kalau dia suruh uh, So weight adalah Newton So if mass adalah dalam kilogram uh, So misconception yang kita belajar waktu Temur fluid Okay, so if They ask to Ah uh, uh, Calculate the the mass, uh, then yang ni bagi dengan 9.81 Okay, 8750 bagi dengan 9.81 you akan dapatkan uh, the mass of the car uh, berapa berapa kilo. Okay, so that's the example. Okay, dah not not complicated kan? Soalan macam soalan fizik lah. Okay, so formula dia dua ni je. Uh, and for you to use this formula Check dulu Piston 1 dengan piston 2 Fluid dia dalam satu medium yang sama ke tak Kalau sama You boleh apply dah terus Okay So type of hydraulic system Okay so uh, Hydraulic system ada dua jenis One is stationary hydraulic Satu lagi adalah mobile hydraulic Apa perbezaan stationary dengan mobile ni Apa perbezaan dia so the difference between stationary and uh, mobile Stationary maksudnya Dia dekat satu tempat So it's placed in one place Macam lead machine You tak boleh bawa ke tempat lain kan So unless you want to use a mover lah uh, Gunakan lori ke bawa uh, But mobile hydraulic uh, Dia boleh bergerak dari satu tempat ke satu lagi tempat bekerja uh, So that is what we call as a mobile hydraulic Okay uh, so ini adalah satu press uh, Press with elevator reservoir <coughs> Okay so stationary hydraulic Is fixed in one station Where all the activities are carried out At the same station So maksudnya you, you letak Macam dekat ini mat So uh, dikatakan So this uh, hydraulic machine Is placed in uh, Mechatronic system design lab So you kena pergi ke sana Buat semua kerja So prepare the workpiece Then bring to other place Production ke apa so that is what we call as a stationary hydraulic. Uh, so it can be a variety of, variety of machine lah. So injecting, molding machine, rolling machine, lifting or conveying device, presses macam ni. Press ini adalah press. So maksudnya you letak workpiece, dia akan press. So that is what we call as a press. Okay. So in manufacturing line, you can see a lot of uh, machines like this. Uh, which is stationary. Uh, so there is not moving. Tapi ada juga another term we call as a mobile hydraulic Where using a hydraulic system Tapi dia boleh bergerak dari satu tempat ke satu lagi tempat So especially when the work is temporary uh, So especially it's like in the outside uh, environment Ataupun dekat tempat-tempat yang uh, kerja itu hanya temporary So then you can use a mobile hydraulic So one advantage of mobile hydraulic so it only uh, do work there at that particular time. So other time it can go to other place to do work. Uh, so much of the police, you always will see this machine, uh, machine paddy, uh, machine paddy yang um, tu a tu a asil kan, asil ataupun na bajar tanah ke. So it will do a lot of work. So it will move. So what? Kalau kita tengok uh, musim musim paddy ni. Selalunya setahun dua kali Tapi dia akan ikut kawasan 
uh, Ia akan ikut kawasan So maybe uh, sebab 6, uh, 6 bulan sekali kan Atau air hasil So uh, Waktu tu air hasil je Mesin ni digunakan So ada 5 months tu dia tak ada kerja uh, So dia akan Maybe perlis dia dah tuai So maybe perak ada lagi So dia akan pergi ke perak uh, So hmm. dia akan So you need to have the flexibility Kalau dia dah fix dekat satu tempat So moving tu a lot of cost uh, So this mobile hydraulic Dia ada advantage So then excavator Ini adalah excavator So tengok dia selalunya Satu, satu hari buat kerja dekat sini So then mesin yang sama The next day will be Dekat tempat lain yeah. Kemudian the next day Dekat state lain uh, Kemudian country lain Macam tu lah So dia akan pergi uh, Place by place So that's one advantage lah uh, And one of the disadvantage Dia tak boleh uh, Dia tak boleh buat uh, A very large work Uh, very large work Kenapa dia tak boleh buat Very large work Apa Kenapa Bagi pendapat you Dia tak boleh buat Dia boleh buat Benda-benda yang simple Tapi dia tak boleh buat Benda-benda yang 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 uh, Yang Perlukan more force Kenapa So what can be the Cost uh, What can be the Reason lah Kenapa Compared to stationary hydraulic uh, Compared to Stationary hydraulic, mobile hydraulic ni Dia force dia tak, tak besar Kenapa? Pak, pendapat dia lah Tak, tak ada makar lah Ya? Yeah? Berat? Cuba lah, think out of box So, the final exam ni The question kebanyakannya Think out of box Ya, yeah, betul Betul sebab liquid yang Sebab storage dia So dia memang gunakan Dua-dua pun gunakan uh, Liquid liquid Same liquid Tapi kuantiti dia tak, tak banyak uh, So dalam stationary, hydro, uh, uh, stationary hydraulic So you boleh build one big tank Dekat belakang You simpan all the hydraulic oil So bila dia nak gunakan Dia boleh gunakan a lot of application So boleh gunakan a lot of force Tapi mobile hydraulic ni Minyak dia Simpanan dia sikit Uh, so Setakat mana yang dia mampu dia akan buat lah uh, So if you want it to do more work You supply lah more reservoir You simpan more minyak So it, you can modify the machine to do more Better work uh, So that's one, one advantage lah So that's one disadvantage Okay So it can be a construction machine Excavator, elevating platform Lifting and conveying device Agricultural machinery So, agricultural machineries kebanyakannya gunakan hydraulic. Okay, so structure of hydraulic system. Uh, so, I tak tunjuk yang ni. Saya, saya tunjuk yang ni. Dia sama juga. Sama juga macam uh, macam pneumatic. Uh, but if you want to design uh, hydraulic circuit, you tak boleh gunakan fluid sim P. You can gunakan fluid sim H. Uh, H untuk hydraulic. Sebab uh, apa perbezaan dia? So dalam uh, fluid sim H Dia akan ada simbol hydraulic uh, Simbol hydraulic uh, So kita akan tengok lah uh, Along the way uh, Okay so hydraulic uh, section Okay so hydraulic system Dia ada tiga section Power supply section Kemudian power control section And drive section Sama macam pneumatic Sama macam pneumatic So in, in power section So dia akan supply power To the system Okay, so dia ada hydraulic pump Dia punya construction dia lain Sebab dia gunakan medium yang lain uh, Because the way you deal with uh, air And the way you deal with oil will be different uh, So, kalau air tu you just like pump Kalau dia lepas pun dia lepas ke udara Tapi minyak you can, you pun will be very careful kan uh, So, kalau dekat kitchen tumpah minyak So you akan jalan macam tu Tak, tak kan So you will be very careful uh, Because takut terjatuh ke Tergelincir ke uh, So When you are dealing with oil You need to be more careful Okay so The construction of the equipment Walaupun dia nampak macam sama Tapi dalam tu dia berlainan Okay And you also we have energy control And also drive section Okay, so hydraulic power section So ini adalah power section Kita so, boleh tengok So it has a filter 
kemudian dia ada pam dia ada reservoir reservoir untuk simpan simpan minyak hydraulic oil dia kadang-kadang dia dia tak transparent lah dia tak transparent dia akan tertutup tapi belakang dia dia memang macam tu lah so it will air oil Uh, kemudian dari sini dia akan supply lah to the uh, valve ok so hydraulic power unit provide the energy required for the hydraulic installation the most important component adalah reservoir tank so reservoir tank dekat bawah so the electric motor ok hydraulic pump ok pump ok so, um, pump so motor tu dekat dalam lah ok pressure relief valve so dia ada pressure relief valve here also safety valve So ada filter uh, Kemudian ada cooler uh, cooler, cooler tak ada dekat sini Ok, so apa yang perbezaan dia uh, So saya tengok Waktu exam pun ada yang gunakan Simbol macam ni uh, So dalam hydraulic, kalau Triangle ataupun simbol-simbol Ni, you jadikan dia Dark, uh, so you You lorekan dia penuh uh, And the simbol dia macam ni Uh, so it symbolize hydro hydraulic okay symbol input dia okay okay so so this is pneumatic this is hydraulic okay so this is one input lah so kalau saya suruh you lukis hydraulic So jangan lukis yang ni So this is pneumatic Even to the valve everything pun Sekala hydraulic kena gunakan simbol yang dilorekan penuh So from that I I will know lah Okay you memang lukis hydraulic So tengok yang dekat sini pun Dia punya simbol berlainan So dia ada reservoir tank Kemudian dia ada pressure relief valve Ada motor Haa tapi untuk your exam, you tak perlu lukis yang ni lah So you boleh simplify pun tak apa uh, You don't need to waste your time to draw all this So you can just simplify this Tapi pastikan yang ni betul lah uh, Jangan Jangan uh, tak dilorikan Tiba-tiba dekat komponen semua you lorikan So I A layman understand ni You gunakan compressed air to power your hydraulic circuit Which is very rare lah Very rare for it to work also Okay <coughs> Okay the first part that you need to know Reservoir Okay reservoir Maksudnya uh, Tempat simpanan lah Tempat simpanan your hydraulic oil So boleh tengok this, So this is a reservoir So minyak akan ada dalam ni Okay so depends on the size lah So kalau size besar Dia boleh contain uh, more oil Kalau size kecil Dia lesser oil Okay, reservoir ni dia akan simpan uh, oil So, the size of the reservoir will depend on the practical application uh, Kalau stationary system, macam kawan you beritahu tadi uh, Stationary system, uh, dia ada uh, banyak So, you can the pump can deliver for 3 to 5 minutes uh, So, 3 to 5 minutes, dia boleh continuously supply uh, Tapi mobile hydraulic, uh, dia ada maximum quantity of hydraulic uh, So, dia hanya boleh simpan So macam, macam dalam kereta pun So berapa Engine oil selalunya berapa liter Untuk kereta Kalau biasa tukar lah Selalunya berapa liter yang you masukkan Engine oil 4 liter ha, 4 liter ataupun depends on the car lah Depends on the car Kalau motor selalunya 1 liter Kan okay. 1 liter ataupun lebih kurang lah So depends on the size So you tak boleh So saya dah beli 8 liter Saya nak masukkan terus tak boleh So because it, uh, The reservoir capacity uh, Tak banyak Okay So that's one uh, about reservoir uh, Function of the reservoir uh, Soalan yang biasa keluar Okay soalan yang biasa keluar Apa function reservoir Okay so provide storage for the hydraulic uh, fluid uh, Help dissipate it uh, Produce in the oil uh, Sebab di hydraulic digunakan oil Uh, so you kena Dia tak boleh ada uh, Eat So because if there's a eat Ada oil So fire will happen uh, So you need to constantly check So that the oil will not be Eated up uh, Kalau terlalu panas 
you need to do something ha, so selalunya reservoir dia ada dekat luar dia macam ada ha, besi ha, so oil tu kena dekat besi tu it will dissipate it to the environment ha, dia ada mechanism dia lah ok, allow air bubble to rise to the surface of oil ha, so dia ada mechanism sebab kalau ada 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 air bubble so what will happen the air bubble will cause the systems to start uh, wall from to start ataupun hydraulic uh, so what will happen so it can uh, cause a lot of damage to the machine so air bubble ni uh, you perlu keluarkan uh, so it will cause a lot of damage so without reservoir air bubble trap in the hydraulic component may result in component failure so kita nak ada satu mechanism untuk remove the air bubble so what you can do uh, so you can uh, make the air bubble to come to the surface so dia sampai ke surface so dia akan uh, air, air bubble tu dia akan keluar lah ke environment and also allow dirt and contamination to settle at the bottom of reservoir uh, so dekat bawah reservoir tu dia ada filter so semua dirt ataupun apa ke so dia akan pergi ke bawah uh, kalau dirt and also the contamination uh, is happening dalam os Uh, so you tak boleh detect Tapi kalau dia dah dekat satu tempat yang Dia tak bergerak uh, So dia akan automatically because of gravity The dirt will go down uh, Then it will be trapped at the filter uh, So filter tu you boleh buka You boleh cuci lah Yang pasang balik Okay so it will help to remove the dirt So contamination level in hydraulic system Must be carefully monitored and controlled To avoid uh, catastrophic failures Maksudnya sudden failures lah Ha, sudden failures ok so hydraulic filters uh, so I uh, I don't know explain a lot on this so filters is to filter uh, the dirt lah so apa-apa yang uh, dirt yang ada dalam hydraulic oil sebab so, oil ni dia you tahu dia punya texture dia boleh attract dirt uh, so kalau ada debu ke apa dia akan pergi lekat dekat hydraulic oil okay. atau oil ke apa-apa lah uh, so what will happen So you need to have a mechanism and uh, you can filter the dirt using the hydraulic filters. Uh, so uh, selalunya dia based on microns lah. Uh, so micron, so 10 micron punya uh, filter. So it can uh, allow up to 10 micron punya dirt. So besar daripada 10 micron size, dia akan filter macam tu. Uh, kemudian ada juga 25 microns so particle yang lagi besar ataupun lagi kecil so depends lah so depends on the size berapa banyak yang dia boleh detect dia ataupun boleh filter ok so air inlet akan masuk uh, then dia akan filter lah filter until uh, only the the one that is ok will be sent to the outlet ok so So it's not so important this slide uh, so dia ada the arrangement of the filter lah so boleh tengok so filter ada dekat sini so this is at the return flow uh, sebab uh, dia ada dua jenis so one pump akan tarik oil akan masuk ke sistem uh, so waktu dia return baru di filter uh, so return flow filter it will only filter when the oil is returned back to the tank ok so um, unlike the pneumatic so pneumatic exhaust dia akan just release to the environment the the unused air tapi dalam uh, hydraulic the oil must be returned back to the reservoir dia start dari reservoir, dia pergi ke sistem pergi ke valve everything so the excess oil must be returned back to the reservoir dia tak boleh lepas ke environment uh, then it will cause contamination pencemaran ok so you need to be careful so the arrangement of the filter it can be at the return flow uh, dia dah pergi ke valve semua dia nak balik baru dia filter ok so that is the return flow filter then uh, pump inlet filter so dia letak sebelum pump so pump ada dekat sini motor pump sebelum tu di filter dulu baru dia masuk ke pump untuk supply ke your system then you have a pressure line filter Ha, selepas dia dah keluar dari motor baru di filter baru masuk ke supply so it depends 
so you can place in the various location the filter uh, tapi dia ada advantage dengan disadvantage dia lah so you boleh baca dekat slide ni ok some are economical, some are very expensive uh, and uh, some are frequently used so frequently used adalah waktu dibalik waktu dibalik you filter baru you masukkan dalam reservoir ok, okay hydraulic coolers ok coolers you tahu apa function coolers uh, macam saya bagi tahu tadi so it can be generated so you need to have a cooling uh, system to cool down ok uh, friction boleh cause energy loss when the hydraulic float flow and this also can force sebab uh, when the hydraulic oil move from one place to another place dia akan melalui os dia so waktu dia lalu uh, it will have friction with the surface of the os uh, dengan permukaan os tu dia akan ada friction uh, kalau dia lagi likat lagi banyak friction lah so you need uh, it will cause the fluid to heat up uh, so it cannot be more than 50 to 60 degrees celsius uh, kalau lebih tu dia akan uh, energy akan loss lah daripada ni so dia akan jadi tak, not efficient uh, so you need to uh, and it can cause the the oil to for premature aging premature aging maksudnya so let's say the hydraulic oil can be used for 4 months Dalam dua, bu uh, dua bulan dia dah tak boleh pakai dah So you need to do servicing lagi uh, So it will cause a lot of problem lah Ok so two types of cooling device You boleh gunakan air cooler Air cooler just gunakan uh, the normal air Untuk cool out the system Ok and you also can have a water cooler Macam buat imagine macam badan kita So kalau you rasa panas Air cooler maksudnya you on kipas So you cool down the body ha. Kalau water cooler You pergi mandi So mandi to cool down the body ha. So you have uh, two two different way lah So air cooler normally uh, If the temperature difference is 25 degrees From what is supposed to be And water cooler can be a bit more Okay because it can uh, cool the system better Ok so water cooler, so ini adalah water cooler So uh, it will pass by the water cooler So dia masuk ke dalam tu, it will be cool down uh, So dia ada water dekat tepi, dia akan cool down lah the heat, Dia akan ada heat exchange Ok so you can end up to 35 degree celsius difference So katakan uh, the operation range supposed to be 50 degree celsius Tapi uh, your hydraulic oil Dah jadi 80 degrees uh, So dia lalu dekat sini dia ada water uh, So dia akan cool down lah Dia akan turun balik So the temperature different Up to 35 degrees uh, difference uh, Boleh di boleh handle The air cooler uh, Air cooler adalah cheaper option So company you tak, ada, tak bagi duit uh, so, so pasang pi lah air cooler So that's the best you can buy So Tapi dia ada advantage adva Advantage uh, You just bagi Connection So tak perlu deal dengan ini So you just pasang dekat electrical point uh, Dia dah Kipas dah boleh function So it can already function But the disadvantage Kipas dia berbunyi lah Tiba-tiba oh macam ni lah Bunyi Tiba-tiba dekat ni ni Low low, low cost Okay So dia akan ada bunyi at times uh, If there's a faulty uh, things so it can cause a lot of noise lah Okay then pump Okay positive and also uh, Non positive displacement Okay so hydraulic pump They convert mechanical energy from a prime mover Engine or motor into hydraulic energy uh, So memang uh, minyak itu kita simpan dekat Reservoir uh, So minyak itu tak bergerak So what motor pump will do So dia akan sedut dari reservoir Dia akan uh, energize Kemudian dia akan supply at a faster uh, flow rate uh, So it will create a hydraulic energy Kita panggil as hydraulic energy Okay uh, When uh, it is move at a faster pace Dia akan create energy itu uh, So it, will, it can be operate uh, All these uh, actuators everything lah Okay the principal pump push the hydraulic fluid and create flow uh, 
So sama macam pneumatic, if you have an environmental air, it cannot be uh, used, but you need to compress and you need to push to the system. Uh, sama lah, sama principle. Okay, it use a displacement principle. So moving from one point to another point with a larger force. Okay, ada positive uh, displacement and negative dis uh, non-positive displacement. Okay, so positive displacement macam centrifugal pump, propeller pump. So apa yang dia buat? So dia dapat je dari reservoir, dia terus akan akan antar dekat sistem. So that is what we call as a non-positive displacement. So apa yang dia dapat, dia terus channel out to the system. Uh, then we have a positive displacement. Apa yang dia akan buat? So dia akan uh, so dia uh, dalam uh, pump ni positive displacement pump dia ada sam ruang so dia akan uh, take take in the minyak dari dari reservoir dia akan simpan dulu so at one point dia akan lepas one shot so dia akan simpan dan lepas one shot so that we that is what we call as a positive displacement pump so dia akan create uh, some storage dalam pump at one point dia akan terus hantar so that is one advantage lah so as you dia cakap trapping a fixed amount of fluid then forcing displacement uh, so ada tiga jenis gear pump, vane pump and also piston type uh, so ini adalah vane pump uh, so you tengok di dalam ni dia boleh tengok dia macam kembang uh, so kembang tu so udara uh, bukan udara hydraulic oil masuk So dia akan memenuhi semua ruang-ruang dekat dalam ni Bulat-bulat ni uh, So after some time uh, It will be released to the uh, application Okay so that's the wind pump So construction dia macam ni lah Kemudian dia ada radial pump uh, Radial pump pun sama Udara masuk dekat sini So it will be stored at the sides Okay ada tiga side uh, Dia ada, macam ada radian uh, Then after some time It will be released to the system ni ni ada construction lah uh, gear pump pun sama so gear pump pun uh, dia udara masuk dekat sini so the gear will move so it will uh, fill all the space in between ok then after some time it will be signed to the system ok so advantage of positive displacement Okay, positive displacement uh, so you can operate at a very high pressure up to 800 bars ok so hydraulic generally dia punya advantage dia boleh buat uh, apa application yang perlukan force yang besar lah so force yang besar maksudnya so macam 800 bar so pneumatic hanya 10 bar maximum tapi yang ni berapa? 80 kali uh, so 80 times bigger force it can handle Uh, kemudian dia ada high efficiency so almost constant uh, at the different pressure range power to weight ratio pun tinggi so smooth and precisely controlled motion uh, and high flexibility of performance so advantage uh, memang banyak lah uh, so in terms of efficiency compared to pneumatic so kalau pneumatic uh, dia gunakan less force hydraulic dia gunakan more force and also more efficient, more precise ok so I think that's all for today so yang lain tu, I akan kawal dalam ad puzzle ok, we will discuss next week